In this video, I want to try to answer the age-old question of VHDL versus Verilog. Which language should you learn in your FPGA coding? Uh, I'll start by just comparing the two languages, but I do have a unique answer uh, for you specifically, which one you should learn. Everybody's a little bit different. Let's get into it. Differences between the two languages. VHDL is strongly typed. Um, strongly typed means that in order for you to assign signals to each other, you need to match everything. You need to match not only the, the type of the assignment, but the width of the assignment. So for example, you can't assign an integer to a standard logic vector without some type conversion there. And even if, and you can't assign a 5-bit standard logic vector to a 4-bit standard logic vector, you need to be very ex explicit with the width and the type. Um, so it's harder to make some typo mistakes, but that requires more coding. So you can't just do some things um, like in Verilog that you can do in Verilog. So Verilog is more weakly typed and you can write code that is wrong but more concise. Like for example, you can assign something that's four bits wide to something that's five bits wide. And Verilog just says, yeah, I know you only assign something that's four bits to a signal that's five bits and I'm just gonna assume that bit that you missed, I'm just gonna assume that's a zero. So that might be a problem in your code and you might not even realize it. Versus VHDL, you might catch a problem like that right away. Um, right before you, right when you're compiling your code, you might catch that problem, but Verilog, you wouldn't catch that problem until either you simulate it or you're running it on hardware. So it can be a lot harder to find some problems like that. Um, but you know, the benefit is that you don't have to type as much. Um, VHDL is very deterministic and Verilog is non-deterministic under certain circumstances. And deterministic basically means that you can have race conditions if it's non-deterministic. And here's an example I found on this blog here. And it's basically, there's two initial begins, an initial begin and an initial begin. And ready gets assigned to one in this initial block. And then in this initial block down here, it says at pause edge, edge ready. If result is equal to five, then say result was ready, else say result was not ready. And it looks, at first glance, you say, oh, what's wrong with that? But so you don't, you can't guarantee in Verilog whether or not you're going to print result was ready or result was not ready. You have a race condition here. And so this is an example of how Verilog can be non-deterministic. doesn't happen too, too often, but it is something just to note. Verilog looks a lot closer to a software language like C. So if you've used C before or any programming language, um, you know, your Verilog is going to look a lot more similar to that than VHDL. VHDL has got a lot of extra overhead associated with it. Um, it does look like code, but it's a little bit harder to find. Um, but I will say right now, those things do not matter. In the long run, I think the most important thing, the reason you should learn VHDL or Verilog is which one you're more likely to use in school or in your job at work, wherever you are. You know, don't if you're trying to decide which one to use, maybe you can start looking at these things. But you know, in general, uh, which one are you more likely to use? If you leave this company that you're at right now, are you more likely to use Verilog in your country or VHDL in your country or your industry? I can tell you in the United States, for example, VHDL is a lot more popular in the defense industry, which is a pretty large user of FPGAs. But Verilog in Silicon Valley is way more prevalent. So it really depends on what industry and where you're working. Let's go into a little bit more details. You know, in general, if you look at Google Trends on uh, on the search frequency of VHDL and Verilog, they're pretty they're pretty close. I was kind of surprised. VHDL is actually a little bit higher uh, in some months. This is an old chart, but I looked at even today, it's the same. And uh, you can notice two things that are interesting on this graph. One is that the search volume dips pretty significantly around Christmas time when a lot of people take school and work off and search volume dips steadily in the summertime as well. So here's where it's going down into the summer and here's where it's coming out of summer. So in general, the two are pretty, from a worldwide Google search perspective, pretty equal. What's interesting though, is if you break it down by country, you start to see some discrepancies. So in the United States skews more towards Verilog in general um, than VHDL. VHDL is the darker green lines here. Verilog's the light green. But Great Britain skews more towards VHDL than Verilog, interesting. Germany, way more VHDL than, than Verilog, and same thing with France. So it looks like Europe, in general, you know, VHDL is the way to go in Europe, uh, or at least Germany, France, and Great Britain. You might wanna look at your specific country to see how your country stacks up, because, you know, 
you're pushing to China and South Korea and Verilog becomes more popular than VHDL in those countries. So it's really country specific. And even within those countries, it's industry specific or even your school, your school might be learning a language um, in some class. You don't want to try to like learn two languages at the same time, focus in on one, learn whatever your boss is using, learn whatever your industry is using, learn whatever your professor is using and stick with that, get good at it. I came from the defense industry. I learned VHDL first and I learned Verilog second. And both are both are fine. I have really, from a language perspective, I can use both. They're equally capable. Um, there's pros to some, cons to the other. And you know, whichever one anybody needs me to use, I'm happy using. So that's pretty much it. That's the answer for VHDL versus Verilog. I think it's a little unique. Um, if you like that, then please support my YouTube videos by buying yourself a Go board and learning VHDL or Verilog on your own. The Nanland Go board is available today for purchase and you can get started right away learning whichever language you prefer. And it's compatible with both. So buy one today and thanks very much for your support.